guys, it's Alice here. I am a doula, a childbirth educator, and I spin this wheel and talk about whatever topic we, the spinner, picks. So let me see what we're gonna get today. Okay, today's a good one. We are talking about meconium. So if you have not been following the Big Wheel of Birth series, you don't know, you might not know, that the first spin ever was about poop. So we are coming around again to talk about poop, but this is different. So meconium is actually a baby's first poop, a baby's first bowel movement. And it there's a couple things to know and that the reason people might talk about meconium and some concerns about meconium. So when it can be a concern, is if the baby has their first bowel movement, their first poop, while they are still inside, so inside the uterus, they're still inside, they haven't been born yet, and they poop. Now, there's a couple reasons that babies do this that we think. One, sometimes we see that when uh, you go for a, when you go past your due date a few days, or a week, or more, then sometimes there is a, more it, it can be more likely that the baby will pass their first have their first bowel movement inside the womb so that might be one reason the second reason that we think is that if the baby is stressed inside that that will cause them to have a bowel movement so if you have watched the breaking the water video so right here oh, it looks like this and i'll put a link down below in that video, we talk about when your water breaks, if there is a color to it, and it's not just a clear uh, uh, color or have any pinkish or mucusiness in it, if it has a brownish tinge, a greenish tinge, um, it can, what that means is that the baby has passed their first bowel movement, and that is meconium in the amniotic fluid. And in this case, the most care providers want baby to be monitored to make sure that the baby still isn't stressed and isn't continuing to be stressed inside the womb. So it is a standard practice for most care providers to ask you to come in to the hospital or to the birth center to be monitored if there is meconium in the fluid. Now, speaking of birth centers, sometimes in labor, um, some birth centers have policies that if there is meconium present, that you will need to be transferred to a hospital prior to birth, as long as there's time for that. So I know that I have worked with some birth centers in the past that that is their policy, that if there is meconium present and that they know, then it is an automatic transfer to a hospital. And the reason for that being um, the hospital might have, or the hospital will have um, a higher level of uh, special specialty um, training for nurses and equipment in case there is something um, concerning about the baby after the baby is born. So um, that is not all birth centers policies, that is just some. But um, that being said, meconium sometimes can be uh, a concern, it can be something that might require a little bit extra monitoring. Um, some hospitals might have policies if there is meconium um, regarding how much monitoring is done in labor, whether intermittent monitoring is allowed or continuous monitoring is recommended. Uh, the other thing that can make, that can be a little bit different is at the time of birth of the baby um, with, a confir with confirmed meconium, um, oftentimes the hospital policy is to um, cut the cord fairly quickly, like not to do a delayed clamping, and for the baby to receive some extra um, oxygen and uh, just to be checked out at the baby warmer in the room instead of going straight to um, mom's chest. So it, now this does depend on hospital policy and care providers, so it is something so you can always ask your hospital what the policy is about meconium or have that have that conversation with your care provider just so that you know. I know that I have seen that sometimes the policy depends on the 
thickness of the meconium in the water, which um, it can vary anything from just a light tint, um, just lightly tinged with a brown or speckled with a brown or a green, to something really thick, which is more of like a pea soup um, look and consistency. And definitely the thicker, darker, uh, darker consistency is more concerning and um, something that definitely would need to be monitored more closely and um, the baby would need to be monitored. I mean, the baby would need to have some special care um, when they are born. And you know, the main thing that, that uh, we don't want to happen with the baby is for them to, um, to inhale any of that meconium. It, is, it, it can cause babies to be very sick and it's something that we want to make sure that does not happen at the birth or after, shortly after the birth. So there's usually um, that concern and they need to make sure that that doesn't happen. So meconium, while it is very natural, if it is thick and um, passes within in the womb, it can be something concerning that, that needs to be monitored and taken care of properly. Now the other thing about meconium is the baby's first stool, if it's not passed in the womb, the baby's first poop, the baby's first bowel movement that happens when you are at the hospital is going to be sometimes alarming to new parents. It is usually very dark, very sticky, very tar-like, and sometimes hard to even clean off a baby's bottom. So don't be surprised if that is the consistency that you see with your newborn baby, that is very normal and um, it will change as the baby eats and um, gets, you know, starts intaking fluids and breast milk and um, that will change. But in the beginning, it is very thick. Now, one little tip that I got from a midwife friend of mine to prevent that stickiness is that if you have any oil, like a coconut oil or a sweet almond oil that you rub on your baby's bum when, when they are just born, um, when that meconium comes out, it will be easier to just wipe off. So little midwife trick that I'll just pass along to you. So meconium happens, but sometimes it can be concerning. So now you know more about meconium. If you have questions about it or something I didn't cover or information you want to add to this conversation, the comments down below are a great way to add information, questions, and I'd love to hear from you. Uh, like I always say, if you like the video, Hit that like button i sure appreciate it it helps more people find the video who are looking for similar information and if you have not seen any other videos please check out our playlist on the big wheel of birth i will see you guys next time for our next spin see ya bye